What is up guys, Tyler here with the Kingdoms Trading Card Game and in today's video I'm going to be giving you a deck profile video. In today's video I'm going to be giving you a deck profile video. I'm going to give you a deck profile of a recent Linford Winterton build that I made and I think you guys are going to like it. Let's check it out. Alright, so here we go for the Linford Winterton deck profile video. So I will say before I kind of go into the content of what is in this deck this deck was built with a couple limitations or with a couple intentions. First of all, I only have so many cards on me, so I don't have like a complete set of the uh, staples that are in every Linter Linford and Winterton deck. Also, uh, I knew that I was going to be playing a particular deck, which I do want to do a deck profile of, which is a Estercrest deck that does use a couple Silvermore cards that just is able to spam out a lot of Ester Towers. Um, and you'd have to see the profile because the deck is its amazing. I love playing against it. It is not my own build. It is a friend of mine's. But anyways, here's the content of the deck. So first of all, I'm running three copies of Spearman of Linford. Now, only thing is, I'm not crazy about this because he does not have an effect or ability, but he's a cost 5, phase 1, 500 attack. I do like that. And he actually was kind of a good card to run into every now and then. I run three copies of Winterton Loyalist. Winterton Loyalist, even though it only protects my Winterton cards, it was nice being able to have the ability to protect a couple of my cards. Uh, ran three frontmans. Uh, frontman, it was just you know it's just a good go-to Linford card. You kind of you definitely want to run it. I think until more cards come out, you definitely want to run this. Being able to rage, and then you have the magic bonus. For a Winterton card, I run three copies of Longi. I actually really like this card. I'm not a huge fan of being in Phase 1. Phase 2, I love being in Phase 2 because that's where I can do a lot of action, especially with this deck. And even though he costs 6 Magicka, um, I like that he gives you plus 2 Magicka when he enters the graveyard. And you get to draw a card out of it, so you're able to get cards in your hand. Now, this is kind of an example of not having a pull full playset. I do run two copies of Lancer. If you play with any Borum deck, you'd be silly to not run Lancer in your deck. I think anyone that plays a uh, Borum deck would agree with that. I do run two copies of Caravan Horse. Caravan Horse, uh, I like it because it protects your Rage cards uh, from dying. And so you can double your attack every turn and it doesn't die. And this card can't be attacked until those other creatures, those other battle cards are destroyed. So that's pretty nice. I do run two copies of Supply Carrier. Uh, supply Carrier is to get that card draw. And so ideally, the idea is to get Supply Carrier and Caravan Horse out in the field so that way you're able to reap the benefits of being able to attack twice but able to draw a card as well. I do run one copy of Gatriva the Audacious. Uh, no one really runs her. I don't think she's that great of a card, but I wanted a power hitter that I could bring back just in case. I only have one Bar Bouncer on me, but Bar Bouncer, an incredible card. Uh, it's not fun to play against, but it is fun to play with. Uh, I did run one Hidden Archer, and this was mainly for the reason because of the deck that I was playing against. I can't, just in case I wasn't going to be able to deliver enough damage, I wanted to be able to sneak around, especially when Phase 3, because I knew this person would always run Skylight Fountain, and instead of having to worry about a bunch of defensive cards, I could just chip right over it, which is the purpose of Winterton. When it comes to neutral cards, I run three copies of Temple Teacher. Uh, a lot of people are discussing, is this card better or is Outpost Power Outpost Tower better? And people are starting to say that they like this one a little bit better because of the cost and the versatility. I think I'm starting to agree with them. And then just because of limitations, I have one Ula the Rebel uh, in this deck as well. Uh, definitely a staple card if you want to have a good competitive deck. When it comes to spells, I run three Shadow Confusions. Uh, again, this was for the sole purpose of playing against this Esther Tower spammy deck that I was playing against. Uh, I wanted a way to take the Esther Tower's health from 2200, flip-flop it to zero, and then quickly chip it out. So that was the goal of that. And that was the same thing with Written Law, is I didn't want to have to worry about defensive, which again is the reason why I ran that. I also ran two copies of Destruction. Um, this was to use the ability Rage, but this one is nice because it makes it so that your card does not die. Um, so that's why I like that. Now, Lost Cause, this is a problematic card, but definitely um, as a Boron player, this is a must-have 
card. I do run one copy of Winter 10 Tactics, which for any Boron build, you definitely want to play it because it is not specific to Winter 10. And then I did run Dogma just in case I had the chance to maybe go for one final blow, give a couple cards rage if at least one had it, and do that. I do one Run Spirit, Lubox, the Seeker of Solidarity. And I just liked it because it was a draw card engine. Um, and I never really got to use it except for the dealing the 500 damage damage to an opponent's sacred so that was kind of nice tokens wise again kind of limited in what i had on me at the time to build this deck uh, i ran three copies of two um i kind of like this token it only costs two magicka so it doesn't take up a lot to get it out on the field so i kind of dig it in that way i run three one copy of three just because uh, I don't want to be sitting at 9 Magicka if I'm able to get 2 tokens out. I'd like to have 10. That is ideal. Uh, and then when it comes to Sacreds, um, if you can see them, I run the Dark Forest, Amber Monument, Skylight Fountain, Forward Tower, and Central, pa Central Palace. Again, this was a build out of limitations. At this moment, I don't know what cards I would have swapped in. Maybe take out Amber Monument for Shua Waterfall because that's a pretty good card. Um, but really the 3 that I would the two that I would typically pick, I would usually run four tower as phase one because I love that I was able to dig into my deck real quick. And what's kind of nice is if your opponent is trying to be sneaky and not attack you and try to deck you out, you can just minus 200 health to this every single turn. And so that way you launch yourself into phase two. So I really liked this at a phase one. And plus, because you always, it's an immediate card draw, which was so cool because when you reveal the sacred, if you don't have any card out on the field, you get to draw a card. So even if you're going first, you get to draw a card. So I love that. And then normally I would pick Fountain at Phase 3. At first I was trying to pick Central Palace or Dark Forest at Phase 2 uh, because I wanted to extend my turn. But I figured Fountain was best at 3. And that's only because Fountain at Phase 3 is good for any deck that you're running. And I just know that if a lot of Boron players, the best ones that I've seen play, which is only two, so it's a small gaming community right now, they run this at Phase 2 because Boron Kingdoms just do not have a way to withstand a lot of hits. And so my opponent was all left was to pick these three, which Amber Monument would probably be the best one to pick um, because it doesn't do much. Um, and Central Palace and Dark Forest, you know, those, those would be a little bit more beneficiary to me unless they wanted to risk it um, where even though I'm getting card draw, they would get card draw off of that. So there is the deck profile video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the deck profile video, any modifications that you would make, uh, if you think it's a solid build, or just whatever else your opinions are. Please like or subscribe to the channel so that way you can keep in touch with what is going on. Also check out the website as well. Um, working on that, updating some stuff, some rules, and other things of that nature. Also be on the lookout at the Game Crafter store. I'm going to be slowly updating that store so that way it looks better and that way the content on it is much better. Every video I do like to end with something that I like to call Bible talk. And for this little brief moment, I do want to talk about the book of 1 Timothy again. Uh, and the reason why I'm talking about it so much is because in our youth group, that's what we are focusing on right now is the book of 1 Timothy. And I want to highlight uh, in chapter 1, verse 5, where Paul, in writing to Timothy and of the church in Ephesus, he's telling them that the goal, the whole reason why he's writing this letter is because he wants everything to come out from a heart of love. From a, it's a foundation of love that results in a clear conscience, a pure faith, and, and things of that nature. And so ultimately, at the end of the day, the issue, even though people are teaching incorrect things, people are being mean, it's because love at the heart of the foundation of the church has crumbled. And so for us today, especially in the society that we live in today, if we want to be able to press through, and especially as Christians, have the light of Jesus spread throughout at all, the best thing that we can do is love Jesus and love people. With that, I hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend. And please, like I said, drop a like on this video and share it if you want. I'm trying to get more subscribers to the channel. Anyway, appreciate you guys and you guys have a good one, all right?